Hello and welcome to Pulse Check with Archer Nursing, where nursing comes to life. In this podcast, you give us 15 minutes of your day and we'll take one complicated nursing topic and make it easy. Ready for nursing to be fun? I'm Morgan and today we're tackling two GI disorders. We're looking at both Crohn's and ulcerative colitis or UC. As always though, let's jump into our practice question to get things started. The nurse is caring for a client who has ulcerative colitis, that's UC. The nurse should teach the client to select all that apply. A, eat consistent amounts of carbohydrates at mealtimes. B, avoid drinking fluids with meals. C, obtain recommended colon cancer screenings. D, avoid taking anti-diarrheal medication. And E, increase the intake of non-caffeinated fluids during exacerbations. Okay, so before we get too deep into ulcerative colitis versus Crohn's, let's back it up and actually look at what is going on in your gut here. I want you to think of the digestive tract as a long, twisty road, starts in your mouth and goes all the way down to the rectum. Now, along the way, you have towns. We're going to picture those as our organs and neighborhoods, different sections. Each of those has a specific job for actually processing and absorbing our food. Okay, so now an umbrella term to think about is inflammatory bowel disease, IBD. And you get IBD when parts of that road get damaged and inflamed over and over. Not all IBD is the same, though. Our two big players are Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So you see in Crohn's, two different types of inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD. They are similar, but different in their behavior, location, and complications. Okay, so first Crohn's. This can show up anywhere along the road that is our GI tract, mouth to anus. But it loves to hang out in the terminal ileum and colon. The inflammation is transmural, meaning it goes all through all layers of the bowel wall. Think of that kind of like potholes scattered along this road of your GI tract. There are some here, there are some there. And in between these potholes, we have some sections of totally normal road. So we call those skip lesions because we got a lesion here and then it skips and then a lesion there. But the damage goes really deep. Remember, transmural through all the walls. So that can mean that Crohn's causes strictures, narrowing of the intestines, and fistulas, abnormal tunnels between organs, as well as abscesses. So three big takeaways. It goes all the way from mouth to anus. We have skip lesions with, you know, potholes here and there, but normal sections between. And the damage is deep, transmural through all layers. So what symptoms does that lead to? Abdominal pain, hello, obviously. Often it's in the right lower quadrant, especially if the terminal ileum is evolved, but it can be anywhere. They're going to have chronic diarrhea. This can be bloody, but not always. That's going to cause them to be losing weight and potentially dealing with malnutrition because that inflamed intestine is making it really hard to go and absorb all our nutrients. This is also causing fatigue. I mean, they're inflamed and they're not absorbing nutrients, so that's going to make you tired. So now let's compare that to UC, ulcerative colitis. Here, it is going to stick to the colon only. It starts at the rectum and it moves up in a continuous pattern. So none of those skip lesions and it's not mouth to anus. It's only in the colon. The inflammation is also superficial, not transmural. It's only affecting the mucosa and submucosa. Those are the inner linings of the bowel. You can think of this kind of as like paint on the wall peeling off. And it's peeling off in one big strip, starting at the bottom and working its way up. Continuous surface level inflammation in the colon, that is ulcerative colitis. So the symptoms it leads to are, again, abdominal pain, but more often it is left lower quadrant because the sigmoid colon is often involved. Very common to have bloody diarrhea, and it often contains mucus. This is a hallmark sign that it's ulcerative colitis and not Crohn's, the mucus. 
We also see urgency, I gotta go, gotta go right now, and tenesmus. This is a constant feeling of needing to go have a bowel movement even when you really don't. All right, so before we move on to our story, let's recap here. I want you to think C for Crohn's and C for cracks, cracks through the entire wall, okay, transmural. It is deep inflammation leading to fistulas, abscesses, strictures that can cause bowel obstruction. Remember, they can be anywhere and we can have those skip lesions. Crohn's cracks through the entire wall. Now for UC, ulcerative colitis, it ulcerates the colon and it is C4 continuous. It is more surface level, starts at the rectum, works upward. We have no skip lesions and we're not getting those abscesses or strictures since it is superficial inflammation. UC ulcerates the colon and is continuous. Now what are the major complications of UC? We can have hemorrhage. We can have perforation or toxic megacolon. That's like a big red flag you got to watch out for for ulcerative colitis. They also have an increased risk of colon cancer. Remember, C for UC, C in the colon. Increased risk of colorectal cancer. So for our story today, you are in the nurse's shoes and you're working in a GI clinic. Your client here is a 32-year-old male, and honestly, he looks pale, thin, and clearly uncomfortable. He sits down for you. You're doing his intake. What brings you in here? He tells you he's been going to the bathroom 10 to 12 times a day, and it's all bloody diarrhea, sometimes with mucus. He tells you, I can barely make it in time. So pause real quick. We barely have any information about this guy, but I want you to think to yourself, is this more likely to be ulcerative colitis, you see, or Crohn's? Think through his symptoms really quick. I'm going to read it one more time. Has been going to the bathroom 10 to 12 times a day, so that frequency. He can barely make it in time. Urgency. Bloody diarrhea. Mucus. It's that last part that should have clued you in. Bloody diarrhea with mucus. What does that point towards? ulcerative colitis. UC affects the mucosal lining of the colon. So that inner layer, it bleeds easily, sloths off into the stool, and that can cause the stool to have that bloody mucus appearance. So that is a buzzword. Remember that for your exams. If you see that, you should be thinking UC, not Crohn's. All right, so let's go back to our client here. We obviously need some more information. We've we've kind of got what we're thinking here. But pain-wise, you want to ask where that pain is located. He tells you it is crampy pain in the left lower quadrant, which again is classic for UC because it often involves that rectum and sigmoid colon. When did that pain start? He tells you it's been gradual over the past three months, definitely getting worse over the last two weeks. He already told you some of those other symptoms, the urgency. He feels like he needs to go all the time. He barely makes it in time, the frequency, and the tenasmus, feeling like he needs to go even after he's just gone. Vitals-wise, looking pretty stable here. Heart rate, respiratory rate, and blood pressure are all within normal range, as they typically are in these chronic conditions. But next you look at his weight, and you see that weight has gone down 10 pounds in just two months. An unintentional weight loss of 10 pounds is a big red flag. We really need to be digging deep to figure out what's going on here. So going into your physical exam here, look from across the room. You can see he is pale, he's sweaty, and he just looks dehydrated. Things I want you observing for the lips. Are they dry and chapped? Check his skin turgor, especially the back of the hand is really good. Pull up and it should bounce back quickly. His doesn't. It kind of sags down. That makes sense with having 10 to 12 bouts of diarrhea per day, right? He's losing lots of fluids and electrolytes, and he's not absorbing nutrition well. So these are all signs of poor nutrition. Palpate his abdomen. It's tender on palpation. No, should not have any rebound tenderness or guarding, okay? Those are signs of peritonitis with more uh, acute inflammation. We should not see that with either UC or Crohn's. 
Next, it's time to do some testing. So the healthcare provider is likely to order a CBC, a metabolic panel to look at all those electrolytes, inflammatory markers. We're going to get quite a few labs. You're likely to see on that CBC some anemia from chronic blood loss since we're having bloody stools and maybe even an elevated white blood cell count due to inflammation. On the metabolic panel, you'll see some electrolyte imbalances like low sodium and low potassium from all those fluid losses. And lastly, inflammatory markers like the CRP and the ESR are going to be elevated, showing us inflammation. You're likely to also get a stool culture to rule out infection. We want to make sure that there's not some sort of virus or bacteria that is causing these signs and symptoms, as that would be treated very differently, of course. And then lastly, a referral for a colonoscopy. We want to look if there is continuous inflammation starting at the rectum, or does it go mouth to anus and we have that full wall inflammation, erosion, abrasions, fistulas, and skip lesions that we might see in Crohn's. A colonoscopy is really the definitive way to tell one from the other. So for this client, he got his colonoscopy and he had continuous inflammation starting at the rectum. You are right, he has UC. That makes sense with the mucus and blood in his stools and all those other symptoms. So treatment-wise, we need to get in there and deal with this inflammation, all right? This client was given IV fluids to correct dehydration and with those electrolyte imbalances that we saw in his labs. To treat the inflammation, corticosteroids, that's going to calm things down. And then oftentimes some iron supplementation as well, like we saw in that CBC, anemia, common from the chronic bleeding. Other things as the nurse here, encourage fluids, but we really don't want caffeine in these disorders. Caffeine acts as a diuretic and that can worsen their dehydration, all right? Great to consult nutrition. We typically recommend a diet of small, low residue meals during that flare up just because we're trying to reduce how much mechanical irritation is going on in the bowel. And colorectal cancer screening will be super important because remember, you see in the colon, higher risk for colon cancer. So for this flare up, our client had IV fluids, steroids, bowel rest, and that slowed his diarrhea immensely. It was down to about three to four times a day. His bleeding decreased, and he was able to transition home, get off of the IV fluids and the IV steroids. He then needed to focus on nutrition with that low-residue diet and watch out for flares, okay? This is a chronic condition, so we just talked about all the treatment for our flare-ups when we have an acute exacerbation. But now he's going home, and he needs to focus on taking care of this long-term. He needs to work with nutrition on that low residue diet, stay hydrated, really monitor his stools for any blood, and definitely get those colorectal cancer screenings. So all that being said, let's circle it back to our practice question. Tell me of the following interventions, because you're caring for a client with ulcerative colitis, of course. Which of these should you teach the client? We're going to go select all that apply. Should they eat consistent amounts of carbohydrates at mealtimes? Avoid drinking fluids with meals. Obtain the recommended colon cancer screenings. Avoid antidiarrheal medication. Or increase the intake of non-caffeinated fluids during exacerbations. So I'll give you a hint. We have two correct answers here. Shout out, what are the two answers? Which of those options would we teach our client with UC? It is C and E. All right, first, getting that colorectal cancer screening we know is so important. UC is in the colon. It increases that risk for cancer. And E, increasing our fluids, those non-caffeinated fluids, during a flare-up, very important. We need to be hydrated. That is going to help all around. We don't want that caffeine because it has that diuretic effect. So to summarize, remember, C for Crohn's, C for cracks through that entire wall. 
Crohn's disease can affect a client from the mouth to the anus. We have those skip lesions. And because it affects the entire wall, we can get those obstructions, fistulas, abscesses, and strictures. For UC, our ulcerative colitis, it is in the colon, increases the risk of that cancer. And remember, we've got one continuous surface level lesion. Again, it is in the colon. So that will tell you the difference between UC and Crohn's. All right, future nurses, that is a wrap. If you found this pod helpful, I'd love to continue supporting your nursing journey through nursing school, the NCLEX, continuing ed, and beyond. Archer Nursing has you covered with on-demand video lectures, high-yield question banks, live case study reviews, and so, so much more. We want to help you master tough concepts and make it fun. So join us over at archerreview.com. Follow us on socials at Archer Nursing for more free nursing tips and study resources. Thanks for tuning in to Pulse Check with Archer Nursing. I'm Dr. Morgan Taylor, and I'll see you back next time.